together and mixed in just the right proportions to create that special Hershey's taste. As the milk and sugar is combined with cocoa, it's mixed together until it becomes a smooth blend of milk chocolate. But we're not done yet. From here, the liquid chocolate leaves the large containers in this chamber, where it will be dried once again. Yes, that's right. This liquid mixture is now conveyed to dryers, such as the one you see on your left. The dryer removes excess moisture, which results in chocolate crumb. The machine up ahead adds cocoa butter into the mix, which transforms it into a smooth chocolate paste, ready for refining. Mmm, mmm, what's that wonderful smell? That's right. After all that shaking, breaking, baking, and flaking, we're finally coming up with Hershey's milk chocolate. But there's still a ways to go before it's finished. On your left is a series of roll refining machines. The refining process grinds the chocolate until it reaches a uniform and smooth consistency. Next, as seen on your left, the chocolate is further refined by a unique process called conching. These heavy rollers refine the chocolate for up to 72 hours until it reaches a silky, liquid texture. The material that leads the conching process is called chocolate paste. These machines supply production lines with over 1 million pounds of chocolate paste per day. Now, after all that effort, we're finally ready to make our Hershey's chocolate bar. Here on your right, chocolate bars are leaving the molding line. They're then cooled and removed from the molds, the final step before being wrapped. And with our milk chocolate made to perfection, we then add peanuts, almonds, and other extras to create a world of wonderful chocolate treats. Here you see the completely automated wrapping machines putting the finishing touch on Hershey's world-famous chocolate and candy products. our tour wouldn't be complete without seeing our famous Hershey's Kisses. Hershey's Kisses are made by dropping a precise amount of chocolate on a moving steel belt and quickly cooling it to form the famous Hershey's Kiss Shape. We can make over 60 million Kiss Shape products every day. Thanks for joining us here at the Hershey Factory Tour. We hope you enjoyed your visit and that you'll come and see us again soon. As you've just seen, Hershey's Chocolate Factory is a world unto itself. And now you know what goes into creating every single Hershey's chocolate product. We are constantly making and shipping the world's best chocolate to your hometown, wherever it is, to make sure you're never without Hershey's quality products. Our goal at Hershey's is to keep you smiling because bringing happiness to you is what we're all about.
and start the process by gathering a little glass from our furnace on the end of a stainless steel hollow blow iron. So it does like Carlos when you're boiling in the bowl. You know, if I pop the bowl, we do that. Can anybody do wash them? Can anybody introduce them? Uh, Using a wooden tool called a block, you'll get the surface of the glass running very round and symmetrical. A small puff of air on the end of his iron, a cap the iron with his thumb to keep it pressurized, and you'll start to see the glass bubble form. Alright, now this amount of glass is a good amount for maybe making a small drinking cup or a candy dish. We want to make something a little bit bigger, so Carl will be gathering more glass over top of that. So they take the time to cut out the block, how to boil it, and go. Then when you shall, it's like water, you just walk around the outside, and take a board. Before we can gather more glass over top of that bubble, we do have to let the glass cool down a little bit. Once the glass is cool enough, it will be solid. That will give us a good foundation to support the heat and weight of the next gather. The glass sits inside our furnace, kind of like water inside a pool. So he'll dip his iron below the surface of the glass. The faster that he turns, the more he can spool off the end of the iron. He'll now use a larger wooden block to shape center and cool the outside surface. While we're cooling the outside surface, we are waiting for that core bubble that we gathered over to heat back up. Using a tool called a steam pad, you can also help shape the glass. A steam pad is a graphite textile pad that we keep soaked in water. This is the closest Carl can come to shaping the glass with his hands without actually touching the glass itself. <laughs> As you can see, the glass has really warm now. It's moving around quite a bit. It's very important for Carl to keep that iron turning very consistently the whole time. It doesn't take much pressure at all to blow the glass up while it's this hot. Only two to three pounds of pressure to get that glass to expand. So Carl is now starting to create a constriction line near the head of the iron. This is a very important step for the process. But later on in the show, we will be disconnecting the vessel from the iron, and we'll do so right at that mark. Carl has cooled down the neck just a little bit. Because that connection point is so small in diameter, as he goes to heat the connection back up, or heat the bowl back up, that connection will heat up faster and begin to move around a lot faster. One of the glass, like getting rid of some of that thickness in the bottom of the bowl. Carl, do you plan to settle this bowl back, or? Okay. Yeah, put on sweet tight cut. Sweet tight cut, I want to shop in with my bowl. Now, anytime we blow into the iron, the glass naturally wants to blow out round. But Carl would like to make the bowl a little bit lower, so we're going to do a process called settling back, where it'll heat the bubble up, hold the iron in the air, and the glass will settle back on itself. Okay. Sure thing. So watch when Carl comes out. He'll hold his iron up in the air, 
One thing he'll do is he'll cap the end of the iron. This is keeping that iron pressurized. This way he's not going to lose any of that volume that he has for the vessel. Carl has asked me to create a colored foot for him, so I'll gather a little bit of glass from my furnace. We're going to roll the glass around on what we call frit to have the color. Frit is small, broken up shards of glass with different minerals, minerals and metals added to give it that color. So he thinks what he's doing. Once I have this color applied, I will have to heat the color up, melting all those shards back together. That's what I get into the board. Yeah, kind of true. I just got the upper and easy to get rid of the tour. Carl's going to mark center. He's using a, a little bit of hard, solid, room temperature glass to scratch the surface of the hole. And cut off the amount that he wants. Using a paddle, he can start to flatten that foot. Should I get a little bit more, Carl? Now, as he goes on the sides of this foot with the jacks, I can keep a board on the bottom to make sure that the bottom is running nice and flat. Alright, Carl's going to continue to shape the foot, just pushing the bottom in a little bit. And soon we'll have to transfer the glass onto a side.